We're going to discuss more news and notes out of spring training, the Tiger City Connect jerseys that should be coming in 2024, the broadcast booth being officially announced, a few more news and notes just around Tiger's land, and then we'll player preview Zach McKinstry. All today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers can join today and get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All righty, everybody. Welcome back. Happy Wednesday to all the halfway point in the week and happy officially pitchers and catchers reporting day. Now we're going to talk about some things. A lot of people are already there. Okay. Like this is, <laughs> there might be a couple of stragglers, I guess that are kind of at the end here, but uh, this is for the most part, everybody is already kind of there that is going to show up on Wednesday. Um, so like I said, th- I'm sure there'll be some cool pictures of, you know, somebody showing up and and officially official kind of thing. But uh, we'll talk about that in a second. A lot of players are already reporting and have showed up early. That's a co- super cool just kind of thing that we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, City Connect jerseys. The Tigers getting an alternate jersey. We're going to talk about kind of the, the opinion floating around on that. What it? I, I don't know. I have no idea what it's going to look like. We don't know what it looks like yet. I'm not going to speculate on that. But we'll talk about just... Uh, that conversation as a whole, uh, the broadcast booth being officially announced on Tuesday as well, radio and TV, have a new face in there. We didn't really see coming, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Spencer Turnbull signing with the Phillies. We'll spend not very much time, a minute or two on that. And then the rest of the show will be a player preview on Zach McKinstry, utility gold glove finalist, Zach McKinstry. From last season. So let's start off with some news and notes out of spring. Again, really just the biggest thing is more and more players continue to show up. Uh, Spencer Torkelson showed up on Tuesday. He reported Max Clark was out there getting work at some point uh, on Tuesday as well. Just more and more guys. Uh, Flaherty's already there. Uh, Tyler Holton's already there. Like the list really goes on and on. Casey Mize we'll talk about in a second. He's really the biggest storyline from Tuesday. Um, but it's it's really, it's it's just super cool to see everybody showing up early. I'm not, you know, hoisting a World Series trophy because some people are showing up a couple of days early. But uh, I, I'd rather that than the alternative, right? <laughs> you know, you can you can take it for what it is and, and realize that uh, it's a plus without, um, you know, uh, changing expectations either. So I, I think that it's a really, really cool thing. I'm, I'm really pumped that that seems to be the mindset. We talked about the Scooby quote from yesterday and just how kind of everybody's mindset is the AL Central. And that's awesome. Like the the amount of kind of optimism and excitement uh, that we have going into this Tiger season, I think is the most that we've had in a while. That doesn't mean it's a lot. That doesn't mean that everybody's like, oh my goodness, the Tigers are going to win 90. Uh, but just compared to what we've had the last eight years, it's probably the most. <laughs> so uh, just super cool. Super cool to see everybody ready to put in work, showing up early, etc. Two thumbs up. Um, as far as the biggest story to come out of the day on Tuesday in Lakeland, uh, Evan Woodbury and Evan Petzl both posted uh, something about it, posted the quote. Uh, at least I saw the two of theirs. I'm sure all the beat writers kind of got their hands on it at some point. But uh, Casey Mize was asked about the arbitration process because he had just showed up today. You know, two things here. One, Casey Mize is maybe the biggest question mark in, in, for the entire team going into spring training games and really just going into this season in general. Um, I, I think we're going to have an episode right before spring training games start where uh, we do, you know, biggest question marks and, and biggest, you know, players that can be impacted by spring training and whatnot. And uh, I, I think that there's a legitimate argument Casey Mize is number one on that entire list. Uh, there's so much 
uh, um, variance is the word I'm looking for in what he could provide this team, right? He's a 1-1 pick. You have pretty high expectations. He also, also hasn't pitched a competitive game in almost two years, two calendar years. Um, so th there's just, all, you know, expectations are all over the place. So he's going to get a lot of questions and get a lot of the spotlight this spring, which I'm excited for, and I hope that he's ready for. I'm sure he is. He's a competitive dude. Um, and, uh, you know, the quote that came out was just asking, asking him about the arbitration process. And, you know, uh, I, for whatever it's worth, he said there was no bad blood between him and the organization and that it was, uh, you, you know, he can't take it personally. The organization can't take it personally either. And that, uh, you know, it's just kind of business and that's just how it worked out. He said he doesn't, he was pretty open about it and candid. He said he doesn't expect the, uh, the Tigers to exercise the option next year, right? He signed that contract that uh, is a signed for this year and then also has the team option for next year, said that he doesn't anticipate that to get picked up and for him to go back into the arbitration process. So uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But he was pretty open about it and also wanted to make it clear that it wasn't uh, anything personal. And he said that he hopes it goes smoother next year so take that with whatever you will you know if you think that his agent's in his ear and telling him to play nice then you know i'm sure plenty of people have that opinion if you think he's being again he was pretty open as far as i can see so i i, I kind of take it as at face value he says he loves being a tiger and has ever since he was the day he was drafted so um i i, I my my concern with casey mize is significantly more on uh, you know his velocity and and what his pitches look like when he starts throwing in games, then it is, you know, whether or not we pick up the team option a year from now or not. So uh, not like a huge news story, but certainly the biggest one to come out of Tuesday spring training. Um, City Connect jerseys. It is officially announced that the Detroit Tigers will, in fact, get City Connect jerseys for the 2024 season. This has kind of been something that uh, Major League Baseball has been rolling out throughout uh the last what three years now four they started before covid maybe even um somewhere around you know 2019 to 2021 somewhere in that range uh the city connect you know teams started getting alternate jerseys slowly rolled out they, they didn't want to do them all at once they kind of wanted to, to leave some cliffhangers and slowly do it over the years, and uh, it looks like I think eight or nine teams are getting City Connect jerseys this year. The Dodgers are getting a second one. I think they're just capitalizing on uh, on on a, a, a big market getting the biggest, most marketable player in the sport. So that that probably has something to do with that, I'd imagine. But the Tigers are on the list, and that has caused a lot of different reactions. I know that there's quite a few people that. Just think, and, and you know, the, the cool part about it is I don't even think that it's like an old school, new school thing, or like some, some uh, opinions can be generalized in like age groups when it comes to baseball, right? This is one that I, I don't really think is too much, maybe, you know, majority of, I guess you could, but there are a lot of, of people all across the board that uh, that think you know what I the the Tigers home and roads the whites and grays are are all I need and I you know I'm I'm good with the tradition of those jerseys I don't need any other jerseys I don't want any other jerseys there's a there's a hefty part of the fan base that feels that way the Tigers obviously one of the oldest organizations in all of Major League Baseball um, so we'll we'll see how it looks we'll see how it looks uh, I also want everyone's opinion on the orange spring training hats. I don't know if that's like maybe a little bit of a hint, hint, nudge, nudge at, at what the city connects may look like. I have no clue. That's pure speculation. I'm not trying to say that they're, they're going to be bright neon orange. I know a lot of people hate the, the spring training caps. Um, I do like the tiger. I like the tiger being thrown on there. Again, it's a spring training hat. Like, it, you know, I, the old English D is all they should ever wear on their hat for regular season and whatnot. But um, I, don't, I don't mind the, the Tiger getting a little bit of a nod there, but I'm very, very curious in what the City Connects could look like. That's I, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I'm cautiously optimistic is kind of how I view it, right? I, I think the Tigers' homes especially are some of the cleanest jerseys, and, and they're simple but beautiful in, in all of sports, but obviously huge bias with that take. 
Um, but I I am interested in what they're going to cook up. Like, is it going to be, you know, try to stay with the traditional? Maybe they throw some more blue in there, but it's like pretty, you know, status quo, just a, a little bit different. Or are they just going to go all out and just make it look wild? I don't know. I, it, it's, you know, the Red Wings have gotten quite a few. You know, the reverse retros were super controversial. Um, so, like, you, you have uh, some storied franchises around here getting – a different look and the tigers it's an alternate right this isn't taking any any jersey spot so i want to make that clear this isn't like a new home or road jersey they'll wear it a handful of times uh, you know th throughout the year and that's it and it's not going to be some some big permanent you know they're going to wear this 80 times a year or anything ridiculous like that um so i i don't know like how mad can you really be if, if it sucks but um, I hope it doesn't suck because that would suck. Okay, now that, <laughs> now that uh, take a drink every time I say that, let's go and uh, move on. Let's talk about the broadcast booth that was announced on Tuesday. We'll do that right after this. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy, and it's what's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into an MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow doing more player previews and more news and notes out of spring. Again, tomorrow's episode will be recapping the true day one of uh, of spring training here. So uh, hopefully some, some more stories coming out. It's just... Uh, I'm so glad we're back. Like we really are. We we truly are. Like we have, we have stories and things to talk about, e even if it's only five ten minutes worth of stuff to talk about every single day from here on out for the next you know eight months. That that's pretty darn cool. So um, also be sure to check out Lockdown Sports today, which you can subscribe to on YouTube, the twenty four seven streaming channel covering the top sports stories of the day with all of our local experts at Lockdown, plus our national shows. And you can also now find it on Amazon Fire TV. That's Lockdown Sports. Today. All righty. So talking about the broadcast booth that was officially announced on Tuesday, uh, the only big surprise here is that Carlos Pena, former Tiger, is added and thrown into this mix as well for the TV broadcast. Um, so officially, Jason Benetti will be play-by-play, -play. Craig Monroe, Kurt Gibson, Dan Petrie, Todd Jones, and Carlos Pena will all be analysts that will be, I'm assuming, rotated throughout the season, just like they've always done. Uh, I find it hard to believe they're going to throw, you know, five or six dudes out there all <laughs> at the same time and have them broadcast the game. And they've been doing the rotation for a while, right? Todd didn't really do much in the first half, did a lot in the second half. Kurt Gibson, obviously, with his health, um, you know, he, he can go on stretches where he can be there frequently and then sometimes – take some time off. Dan Petrie, I think, is one of the unsung heroes of this booth. Uh, you know, people have, have really given a lot of negative attention to the broadcast team and just uh, Bally Sports Detroit in general for the from the Tigers' perspective, at least, over the last couple of years. Um, and I, I think Dan Petrie is, is phenomenal. And I think he gives great insight, especially on the pitching side of things. Uh, then your reporters, you have Johnny Kane, Trevor Thompson, and Natalie Kerwin. Uh, obviously Kane and Thompson have been there for years now. Natalie, I think was just thrown into the mix last year and was a fantastic ad. Great person as well. Uh, and then John Keating and Mickey York, obviously doing the hosting as they have done for most of my entire life. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I like the addition of Carlos Pena, get another former tiger in here. He's been doing MLB network stuff for a while. So has a lot of experience, but I mean, it's, it is kind of cool that you have one of the best play-by-play -play guys in the entire industry 
And then he's paired with, you know, depending on the day, five former Detroit Tigers. I think that that's just a cool perspective to have former Tigers that played, you know, and, and guys that were pretty darn good. Tom Jones is is one of the more underrated closers uh, there are, right? Like, is is I th- is he still, he's up there for Tigers all-time save total. Obviously, Carlos Pena played for kind of the dark days of the Tigers there and uh, the pre-2006 Detroit Tigers, but Gibby, obviously a World Series champ, one of the most famous Tigers of all time. Dan Petrie, obviously World Series champ, like Craig Monroe, right, was a fan favorite when he played, was a part of that Miracle 06 team. Like, it, it's just, it's really cool to have uh, that. So we'll see, right? We'll see. Uh, I, I think this is a situation where you can only go up uh, from here. And uh, I, I think just the addition of Benetti is unbelievably exciting. Also, for the 30 or 40 games that Benetti will be doing national broadcasts and won't be on the Tigers broadcast, Dan Dickerson will be doing TV for those games and those games only. That's super, super, super exciting. Uh, Greg Garnia, I, I always mess up pronouncing his last name. I apologize if I did. But um, from the Erie Seawolves, who is widely considered to be like a rising star in the broadcasting industry, um, did a couple of games for the Tigers last year. He will move over and do Tigers radio games when uh, when Dan Dickerson is obviously doing TV. Um, so, yeah, you have uh, – and then you have Andy Dirks returning, obviously. That's going to be another one that a lot of people liked last year as well. Um, so yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this. We'll see kind of how the rotation works in terms of, uh, you know, like which analysts are getting which games and et cetera. Uh, Bobby scales also going to get a lot of work in the radio side of things was a fantastic add to the broadcast booth last year. And then Daniela Bruce, who just does an absolutely wonderful job and is a great person as well that does wings and tigers. Uh, we love Daniela. So yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm really pumped. I'm really pumped about it. I, I, I think that this is, uh, again, this is a situation where a lot of people have given a lot of heat to the broadcast booth for a while. And now you're in a position where, uh, you, you got some talent. You, you really do have, uh, have a pretty talented, uh, cast there. And I, I'm, I'm excited about what it could be. I'm not going to say that we're going to go from like, you know, the, the bottom of most rankings, which we've been at for a while in terms of broadcasting to like the very top in a year. Um, but I am, I am intrigued. I am intrigued. I am optimistic about it. I'm intrigued about it. And I'm excited to just see how, uh, how Benetti works with everybody excited for Dan Dickerson to be on TV every once in a while, uh, excited for, again, th- those radio guys that are getting an opportunity, all of them, all of it just super, super cool. So, um, okay, let's – the only other thing I really got to say before we get into player previewing Zach McKinstry is Spencer Turnbull signs with the Philadelphia Phillies. I believe Dave Dombrowski drafted Spencer Turnbull. So kind of a full circle moment there. Um, you know, I, I, I wish him nothing but the best. I, I really don't have too much to say about this. I'm only bringing it up because I've been ask, asked about it. And because, uh, I don't know, he, he was a, he was a big story at the end of last season and he's not coming back. Um, I, I, I again, I, I wish they do nothing but the best. Clearly the relationship between the Tigers and Turnbull was very, very, very sour by the end. Clearly like, you know, it, it, I don't think either side will admit it cause that's not really great for business, but it doesn't really take a rocket scientist to figure out that what they were doing uh, or what not what they were doing. Uh, It it doesn't take a genius to just kind of look from the outside and be like, you know what, this, I don't think either side really, either party is too fond of the other one at the present moment. So he's going to get a new beginning there. We'll see uh, what his role is going to be. I don't know if he's going to be more of like a depth signing that they're kind of taking a flyer on, or if there's a belief that he's going to make crack the big league camp. I don't know. Maybe he's finally willing to, to move to the bullpen. I, I have no clue. I, I don't know. Not uh, not on our radar anymore. Just kind of a, a farewell and a best of luck kind of conversation. Then, uh, you know, go listen to Locked on Phillies <laughs> for, uh, for, for some analysis on what kind of role Tur- Turnbull could have. But obviously gave us some fantastic memories. Uh, one of the coolest and just most awesome nights uh, in recent memory of Tigers baseball. Really in my entire adult life, right? I had the pleasure of turning... 18 right when the tigers started sucking (laughs) all right uh like they they sold i turned 18 in 2016 
So like my entire adult life has just been bad Tigers baseball. And uh, he gave one of the the coolest moments uh, of Tigers baseball in my adult life. Absolutely. So um, thank you for, uh, for the no hitter. Thank you for the time here. Wish you nothing but the best. And uh, we'll see. Kind of, I'm really, really fascinated mostly with just what his role is going to be, to be honest, with the Phillies, kind of what they're expecting out of him. Um, it'll be a big spring training for him, given the lack of pitching that he had for the team this past season uh, at any level. So, um, OK, let's preview Zach McKinstry. Not a huge conversation, but a, a decent one. OK, uh, Zach McKinstry. uh I think flying under some radars here out of options going to be kind of fascinating to talk about his role on the team. Let's do that right after this. FanDuel is the best in the business. We talk about it all the time and it is peak basketball season. So you could get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's 150 bucks. If your bet wins, you can bet on all your NBA players and teams with quick bets, uh, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all so much for tuning in. Talking about Zach McKinstry and his role on the team, kind of my expectations for utility player Zach McKinstry this upcoming season. Um, this past year in 2023, he had a 231 average, a 302 on base percentage, a 351 slug. That was good enough for an 81 WRC plus, so almost 20% worse than a league average. But despite being 20% worse than league average on offense, he was such a plus defender at so many different positions that he ended with a 1.2 war on fan graph. So a 1.2 F war did have an eight and a half percent walk rate, a 21.8% K rate, nine homers and played in 148 games. Zach McKinstry almost led the team. Spencer Torgelson played, I think, in all but one or two games. So he led the team. But Zach McKinstry got more playing time than just about anybody else on the roster. And uh, this is another guy, you know, when when we talked about Andy Abanez, I mentioned that I think A.J. Hinch loves Andy Abanez. I think A.J. Hinch loves Zach McKinstry. I think he's right up the alley of what uh, he wants out of a utility player. Right. Like this is a guy that, again, we talked about it at the end of last season. We talked about it during last season. Uh, he is a plus defender at and and a big time plus defender and plays a boatload of positions. He was a net zero defender in right field. He was a plus one defender in center field. He was a net zero defender in left field. He was a minus one, just a hair below uh, a net zero defender at shortstop net zero at third and a plus four at second base, right? So his OAA, his outs above average, pretty popular defensive metric these days, uh, was in the 85th percentile, top 15% in baseball. And that was playing, again, seven, six different positions. Another thing, his arm strength, 96th percentile. 96, top 4% in the league in arm strength, has an absolute cannon. Uh, sprint speed, 80th percentile, pretty fast. Uh, he was in the 77th percentile in base running run value. So just the amount of value uh, that a player provides via his base running was a plus one there, right? Um, uh, was obviously a big time plus value defensively. So he is versatile. He is a lefty hitter that is versatile, plays a lot of different positions, has a cannon, and can run the base as well. All of that is immense value off of your bench. Now, the thing is, 148 games played. The thing with McKinstry for this upcoming season, I think the biggest difference we're going to see from his 2023 versus 2024 is playing time. And that's why I bring up his playing time. I don't think Zach McKinstry sniffs 150 games played this upcoming season. 
Um, not that he is like terrible and I think he doesn't deserve it or anything like that, but his role on the team, we now have an everyday second baseman, right? So the only real opportunity that he's going to have is a just off days for Colt Keith. Obviously you can put him at second base fine or, but Colt Keith's also a lefty. So kind of takes away from the platoon-ness of the two of them. Third base is obviously going to be a big one. And then if anybody needs a day off, again, can can hold his own in the outfield as proven as well. But you're deep in the outfield. You're going to carry four or five outfielders. You're going to have an everyday second baseman. The opportunities for him are really going to, to I don't want to say plummet, like he's going to play in 30 games or whatever. He'll probably break 100 if he stays healthy. Um, but just from pinch hitting opportunities and whatnot. But I expect his his amount of plate appearances to really take a big hit this upcoming season, which I think is a sign of growth from the team. I think that's a good thing. I think that means the team is getting better when uh, when players, when utility players that had 653 OPSs are getting less playing time from one year to the next. And that's, again, no disrespect. I love Zach McKinstry. I like what he brings the team. Um, and, and I think that he, I have him on this opening day roster. Um, but he is a player with flaws. And the flaws are offensively, almost exclusively. This is a guy that had like the best May in the entire game of baseball. Uh, <laughs> that's an, only a slight exaggeration, actually. Um, had an 865 OPS and a 454 OBP. He was leading off that month. Had a whopping 20 walks in a month. The only person that was even close to him in all of baseball in the month of May for walks was Juan Soto, who is like the best at drawing walks that, you know, we, we've seen in a generation. So for one beautiful month, he was, he was him and, and he was, he was the dog, right? He, he was absolutely crushing the baseball. Uh, and, and really, I mean, he, he uh, hit over 300. Yes. But really a lot of his value came from walks more show more so than quote unquote, crushing the baseball. The thing is outside of the month of May. Okay. June 180 average 485 OPS, July 610 OPS, August 674 OPS, September 537 OPS. His OPS post All-Star break was 606, almost sub 600 for the entire post All-Star break. And the biggest thing, the thing that really makes me the saddest about it is his walk numbers he had 20 in the month of April. He had 16 in the entire post-All-Star break. And the biggest reason why, if you listened to the show last year, you are very, very, very well aware of what I am about to bring up. His biggest flaw is that he swings at every single curveball in the dirt. All of them. Not, not some of them. Not most of them. Literally every single one. And... That is backed up by eye test, any any amount of numbers and data you look at. Um, Baseball Savant has a beautiful feature where you can look at zones. You can do zone charts. And we did this during the regular season last year, but that was almost eight months ago. And we're doing a player preview, so we're going to bring it up again. Zach McKinstry, it was actually uh, abused by opposing pitchers so much that he saw more just straight up pitches in each zone. He saw more pitches, balls that were low and in and balls that were low and away, not even in the strike zone. Low, like pitches that are, all, again, almost bouncing on home plate that are well, well, well below the zone. He saw more pitches in those two zones than any other zone. It strikes, balls, doesn't matter uh, uh, in the entire season. And the reason why he loves swinging at them is because low and inside strikes, he absolutely crushes. And that is the give and take and the frustrating part with Zach McKinstry. His slugging percentage on pitches that were low and down the middle, low and in, and, and middle inside. Okay, those three in that low and inside corner, those three boxes, if you were to divide the strikes on up into nine different boxes, 739, 655, and 707. That's like Barry Bonds, right? 
And they're one zone. Obviously, no one here is calling Zach McKinstry Barry Bonds because Barry Bonds did that across about 15 different zones. But you get my point. That That is an ungodly slugging percentage. That's MVP. That's like insane power. But he gets thrown. Uh, where's his whiff rate one? That one's uh, another. Oh, here's my favorite one, actually. This is just strike percentage. Each zone, again, nine in the strike zone, and then you have uh, boxes right outside of the strike zone as well um, for, for just balls outside. Just purely the amount of times that when the ball is in that zone, it is called a strike, whether it's a foul ball, a called strike, a swinging miss strike, it is a strike, okay? Everything in the strike zone, pretty decent. Up and away, he swung and missed a lot. We talked about that a little bit last year as well. But pretty pretty low numbers in the strike zone, especially on the middle of the plate, as you should as a professional major league hitter. Balls low and away, 41% of them were strikes. If you just don't swing at them, they're going to be called balls. Yet 41% were strikes. The most alarming one, low and in. Balls that are low and inside, not in the strike zone. 64% K percentage. 64. Do you know how remarkable that is? That almost two-thirds of the balls thrown in that zone are, are, are going to be called Ks. When if you just don't swing their balls. It's remarkable stuff. Okay, remarkable. So his whiff rate over 50% on balls low and in. I could go on and on. Uh, there's so much data to support what I am I am trying to tell you. And uh, if you just watched Zach McKinstry play baseball that last year, this is not news to you. So there are huge limitations on the, the peaks that he could reach. Uh, my expectations for him this upcoming season are just to be a good lefty utility infielder. Nothing crazy, right? And I know that that's really tame and like all of my expectations so far have been kind of in that territory. We haven't really got to any of like the huge, big, notable guys yet. I guess Jason Foley a little bit yesterday, but you know what I mean? So we'll, we'll you know, I'll, I'll go out a little bit more and, and have some more, you know, fiery, like fun takes. But, you know, when it comes to a guy like McKinstry, I just want good defense at every single position you play. I say just like that's an easy thing. That's very valuable, which is why I think Zach McKinstry makes this roster. He's also a lefty. I think Hinch likes that. That gives you value off the bench. We know Hinch loves to pinch hit. Um, and, and Zach McKinstry, again, didn't get too many opportunities against lefties last year. 653 OPS on the season and a 653 OPS against righties, which means he also had the exact same against lefties. The, if, the issue is he has zero power and zero uh, ability to hit the ball hard against lefties. Whereas righties, that's where all of his home runs and literally all of his home runs and doubles came from last year. Um, he, the only omission is he had one triple against the lefty. That was his only extra base hit uh, against the lefty all year. So you can get him in there against some righties um, and, and get him in there against the guy that doesn't have a big loopy curveball that he can just throw at his ankles and swing, have him swing against. He can give a lot of people a day off. He's also out of options. I think that, uh, I think that he's uh, a piece that, Again, over one war last year. Like that, this is a, a, a you could do a lot worse as far as utility players go than a 653 OPS and a guy that's a plus defender at six different positions. So, um, yeah, I, you know, league average K rate, league average walk rate by the end of the year. But that was a huge spike early where he was like Juan Soto level walk rate and then a huge fall off where he, you know, was Javi Baez by the end of the year. So, like, I don't know which one you're going to get over a full season. That's a great question. Uh, if, if you don't have the big spike and then the big fall off, I'm not really sure what to expect in that department. Um, but if he can just find a way to not swing out of his shoes on every breaking ball that's in the dirt, um, I think that you could legit. I mean, he's only 28, right? There are, there are still adjustments to be made here. Um, I, I really do think that you could have uh, one of the better uh, kind of lefty off the bench options uh, in your division. I, I really do. I, I, I think that there is a ceiling for McKinstry that is, you know, 700 OPS plus defender at, I've said that a million times, six different positions. Um, and, and I think, you know, give you a little bit of pop, run into a homer every once in a while, nine home runs last year, obviously nothing crazy, but uh, maybe against some righties, you know, with some platoon work. 
And then the floor is obviously um, that you look around and he, you know, the the walk numbers are really bad and he can't stop swinging at that ball low and in the dirt. And you don't have a need for a guy that can play a ton of different positions when you already have a lot of people on your roster that play a lot of different positions. You already have Beerling, you have Andy Abanez, you, you have even some guys in the outfield that you can kind of, you know, Mark Canna can play around the outfield and has played corner infield before. Like you, you have some ver- enough versatility where you don't necessarily need to hold on to Zach McKinstry for dear life this year, like you did last year. And you know, if, if second half him is much more in line with what we're going to get off a full season offensively, um, then, you know, the floor is, is a guy who doesn't finish the year with the team and, and is uh, a, a rather quick omission. I, I think at his floor, you know, if he's got a 580 OPS and, uh, and, and you're not getting a ton of playing time because you don't need a ton of playing time, then there you go. Uh, they'll they'll find their lefty platoon with, you know, Akil Badu or somebody else on the bench than, uh, than, than holding on to, to McKinster. I think he, he, but again, I think he provided a role for you last year that they liked. He's out of options. I anticipate him to be on the roster on opening day. I think the coaching staff likes him. Uh, we just got to see if he made some adjustments this year. That's really the biggest thing. All right. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow, baby. Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all then. Let me know what you think of Zach McKinstry. Let me know what you think of the broadcast booth. Let me know what you think of um, uh, City Connect jerseys. Um, Casey Mize's comments. That's everything. Peace and love. Go to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers. Nope, that's not right. Where's this video? There's my outro video. Go Tigers.